This is working. All right, I think we got this going now. Hey, everyone. All right, so I'm just going to get the comments on the side so I can see if anyone needs anything as we are going through today. Bear with me while I set things up for us. Okay. Perfect. I think there's already some people watching, which is fantastic. Okay, great. I'm just going to mute that. So I'm just going to bear with me while I set this up. Where am I? All right, guys. I'm just going to give it a little more time just to make sure everyone can jump on. Hey, Queenie. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Lawrence. All right, awesome. So I think I got my comments going. And I got my video on, kind of, sort of. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so just make sure we can see everything. So you got the painting there. Okay, awesome. So we're going to give it a little bit more time just to make sure everyone can jump on before we fully start today. Um, so thank you again for joining me. Um, we're going to be doing um, the Lighthouse Sunset. So this is the painting right here. So I have it right here for you guys. Um, I did a few, a little, few different tweaks on it. So I'll be leading you through that. I just added a bit more yellow in the lighthouse. I thought it looked a little bit nicer and brighter that way. Um, and, um, but it was really fun to paint. I really love the colors on this. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys today. Um, so it's almost two. I'm gonna be putting my paint on my <laughs> increasingly dirty canvas. Um, and so again, we're going to be using our go-to colors. In this painting, I actually used quite a bit of red um, in the blue. So th my purple is more of a red purple or red over the blue than more of a blue purple. Um, so I would suggest uh, putting a good amount of red on your canvas. Um, I actually used, um, I didn't use that much blue. So just a little bit. Can't really see as I'm pouring it on, but you can always add more as we go anyways. And it really depends on the size of your canvas too. Oh, fantastic. Hey everyone. Oh, it's so nice to see everyone jumping in. Hey Sarah. Hey Alex. Hi Tori. Hi Hermie. Hey Jillian. I'm so excited. Yay. This is so fun. Okay. I really, it, it really makes me happy that you guys are enjoying this. It's giving me a really great sense of purpose and um, it's just fun to share something that I love to do. And if you guys are getting something out of it, it makes me so super happy. So I'm just going to continue. I'm just putting the rest of my colors on my um, palette. If you have a purple, um, I for sure just use the purple straight up from your paint. I, I'm trying to stick with just the basic ones, just for anyone who's new and joining us and doesn't have um, the variety of colors um, already done, but you can always do everything with your three primary colors. Awesome, I'm just grabbing my paint brushes that I want to use. Okay, there we go, I'll bring them a little bit closer. Awesome, hey, Lindsay. All right, I'm gonna tie my hair up actually too, because. That's just gonna get in the way. And we're gonna get started in about a minute, two minutes or so, once we get everyone else on here. So the canvas um, I'm using is a canvas board. Um, I bought a pack of 12 from Amazon. I think it was, they're about like, I think it was about $30 for a pack of 12. And they're, it's like a really thin board. So they're really easy to like store considering how many I'm doing now. It's kind of nice to have um, nice and flat. And it's just like a, a thin board and my size this is a nine by 12 so that's what i've been using for most of the painting um, that i've been showing you guys 
if you guys are interested. And then these paints again are just ones I got from the dollar store. This is craft like deco art crafters acrylic. So feel free to grab some of those. It doesn't have to be anything pricey at all. Um, and what we'd like to do is let's see how we're going here. All right. So it's just after two o'clock. So um, what I will try to do today is um, I want to uh, go through a bit on like how to blend and just talk a little bit more about those techniques. Um, I know a few of you guys have joined me um, a few times already. So um, you might already have the feel for it. And a lot of it is you kind of just get comfortable with and have the feel. Um, but I'll try to be a bit more um, specific about how to go about doing that. And I've hopefully this setup works well for you guys. Um, and you can see my canvas a little bit clearer um, and the painting. Again, I would suggest you having um, the actual picture in a very easy reference spot to where you are. Okay, cool. And that'll be easier for you to follow along because sometimes you may not see or might get in the way. I'm trying not to, but it happens. All right, cool. Fantastic. All right, so. Just going to give us everyone just another minute or so before we start. Hope everyone's week has been great. I'm still losing track of the days actually doing um, leading Jack through doing uh, the schoolwork that he has to do for school that actually has been helping me keep track of which day it is. <laughs> so that's been kind of good, even though it's, it's pretty frustrating. I don't know how the rest of you guys are doing with uh, leading any of your kids through some of that schoolwork, but it's, um, yeah, it can be a little intense. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, great. Cool. So um, let's get started. So what we're going to do is um, I'm using my big old brush and I just put some water on it. That was a little bit too much. So I'm just wetting it a bit. I don't like to start with a fully dry brush. So acrylic paint is a water based paint. Um, so that's why I always like to use that a little bit. So it's very smooth. And what we're going to start with is we're going to start by putting in your horizon line and getting some of these yellows going in first. Um, and then we'll work with the purples. So with the canvas here or with the canvas, sorry, the palette here, I'm just putting, just coating my brush with um, yellow and I'm just putting a little bit of white paint and pulling that in. So my brush has quite a bit of paint on it and we're going to, and we're, we're going to see where we want the horizon to be again. You can put the horizon anywhere you want. You want to make it a, a you know, landscape portrait. Doesn't matter which side you want to do it. This one in particular, it's almost halfway down. Um, maybe, yeah. So I'm just, just above halfway mark. Essentially, is where it's at. So just eyeball it, and then let's put that in. I'm gonna put a little bit more water just to make that paint flow a little bit smoother. And with this, we're just blocking it in. Okay. Again, sometimes when I do this, hopefully it's straight on your side when you can see it. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna keep pulling in the yellow and the white and putting a bit of water as I'm going just to make sure it's a bit smooth. And I'm just gonna bring this up. So this particular one kind of comes across almost to First, like the big chunk of the top is purplish. So we're just gonna make this part mostly all yellow. Um, now I'm just putting pure white on my brush and then I'm just putting it on top of that. And that's gonna start giving me a bit of a blend. So when you wanna blend acrylic paints, they both need to be wet for them to blend together. Um, if, you are, if you let the paint dry and acrylic dries really fast, as we've seen, what happens is um, you won't be able to blend. However, you can create really great effects when you're doing highlights very fast which is why I love acrylic paint, um, but it can also be a pain in the butt. <laughs> so if you're waiting for it to dry, just to do some of those additional lines, it's kind of annoying, but if you are um, wanting to blend it and it's dried already so fast, then you're kind of out of luck. So I'm just continuing to get some more white and I'm just putting some more white in here and bringing it upwards a bit. Okay. Um, now I want it to be a little bit orangey in some of these spots. So now with my brush, so I've already kind of taken off most of my paint from it. I'm going to grab just like a little bit of red. That was too much. And it's almost like pure red there, but that's cool. And I'm just going to pop that in there and I'm going to put a little bit here 
and a little bit here. And then I'm gonna go back to my brush. My brush still has a bunch of red on it. And now I'm going to get more yellow on my brush because I don't want that red to take over, nor do I want it to make a pink. Okay, so now I'm mostly on a yellow brush now. And then I'm going to just go and paint over what I just did, <laughs> essentially with my red. Now we're gonna have some nice blending happening. Okay, I'm gonna get some pure white on my brush and just kind of go back and forth a bit with the colors until I get a blend that I like. And I'm gonna go back in afterwards um, once it's dry and add some more details that way as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna bring that upwards and we're gonna start going into the other colors in a moment. Okay. And I'm not gonna put in um, the sun yet. I'm gonna wait as well later and put that in a bit later too. So we're just gonna do just the yellow background right now. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean off my brush, get some of the yellow off. I most get like all the yellow off of my brush. I found when I did this painting, um, when we go into the purples and then you wanna go back to some of the lighter colors, my water got really murky. So you might want to at that point change your water out and get fresh water um, later when you, uh, after we do some purples because it, like it's, it was almost impossible to get like a nice pure white <laughs> going later. Okay, so now let's mix some purple. So we're going to basically just put yellow and red and mix it together. What I'm doing is um, I'm, I want it to be a bit more on the red than the blue. That's the purple I like more, but it's gonna be a blend anyways in the sky. So it can have elements of both. So I, that's how I kind of just made it. I'm gonna get some water, add to my mixture like that, okay. And now this has nice sweeping. So let's just pop in however we want that purple to start coming in. Okay, so I'm just going kind of all over to get that color on. Now I'm going in and I'm just gonna get some black on my brush and then I'm gonna get the corners because I want that to be a little bit darker. And my brush still has the purple. So as I'm going, the black's kind of fading and I'm able to now not just have like pure black everywhere. I'm also getting the sides of my canvas. That's always my pet peeve. And it's really easy to do the sides when you have this kind of canvas board. So that's nice. That's a nice thing to do. Okay. Get some more of that purple. Um, yeah, I wanna mix a little bit of white in there too. So I just put my brush right in white. And I'm going to start breaking that down. So just pure white. Some more white. I'll bring that up here. Okay, I'm just going back and forth between the purple and the white. And I'm sweeping in kind of like a diagonal to the uh, corner on the top left. I just put some water on my brush and I'm just touching up some of the points. When you put water on, just be cautious because that makes everything blend very well. And so it ends up sometimes just blending everything together. Oh, is there a glare on it? Oh, that's not good. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna just open up my camera for a second, my full camera so I can see what you see. It is pretty glary, isn't it? So we need, so I need to paint somehow like this <laughs> so we can get it going. Okay, let's see what I can do. Give me a second. I'm gonna just close out this window and then we'll see if that makes it better. Yes, it does much better. Okay, awesome. Ooh, it's like super dark now. Can I turn this light on? Is that gonna be glary again? Oh, sorry, my big face is in the way. Nope, that's still a little bit glare. All right, we're gonna figure out the logistics of this one day. One day, one day we'll get it. All right, I think we're gonna do this. 
a little shadowy, but I think you can see the colors better this way. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, let me know what you guys think once you get there. I think we're at that point. It's weird because I have like a slight delay on this. So as you guys are commenting, I'm answering and then I don't see any responses until <laughs> like a good chunk later. <laughs> it's very weird. Okay. Can you see that better? Let's see. The light makes everything super bright. Okay, hopefully you guys can see it better now. Okay, so I'm just continuing. I put too much water on my brush and now it's getting a bit, um, just mixing everything and I don't want that. Okay, so now I've put back, I, I grabbed some red on my brush and I'm just adding, cause I want some of those, uh, there some red spots coming in, some red streaks. So I'm just gonna put them in where I want them to live. This is good, looks great. Awesome, good, I'm so happy. Thanks for uh, bearing with me in that process. I'm just getting some more white to see if I can blend that in a little bit. That's actually something that's really kind of frustrating in this too, is that you guys, if you're in the middle of your painting, it's hard for you to give me feedback or to like, let me know what's happening. So thank you so much for stopping and um, giving me that feedback. I really appreciate it. Okay. It'd be great if there's some kind of like voice activation, but also that could probably be really annoying too, I'm assuming. And people would just be like, well, I know my son wouldn't, won't stop. <laughs> He's decided not to join us today. He was with me yesterday when um, we painted, when I painted that one, just so I could get that going for us today. Um, and he did his own kind of version. He just did his own painting. He, he didn't really want to do that one. And then he decided to say that he would rather just play video games with dad, which, you know, that's fine with me too. <laughs> it's nice to have a bit of a break. Okay. So I'm just kind of redoing what I, what I said before. Um, just going back and putting some more of the black in with my brush and the corners and then going back and kind of making the sky as closely resembling what I would like it to resemble as possible. Okay, I need some more white in here. I don't like that, what's happening. Okay. All right, so just getting a bit more lightness going. I go from like liking it and then I do a little bit more and then I don't like it, but then I can't stop touching it sometimes. <laughs> and I feel like it's not swooshing the way I want it to. So I'm gonna get some more red actually, put back in. I want to swoosh up a little bit more. I've already ran out of red. I don't know about you guys. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Valerie. Okay. I do want to keep the top part still pretty dark. So I'm just, again, kind of going, touching my brush with a little bit of black just to have that feeling in here, but just trying to be cautious of it because I don't want it to overtake the entire painting. And I'm still kind of doing like a sweepy as if the clouds are, it's kind of a windy day and it's kind of sweeping through the whole scene. And I touched a little bit down here, which I don't like that. Just gonna clean off my brush there. I wanna still keep this very yellow and white and I've kind of put too much of a lilac in there. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a moment. So this is where acrylic's really great because again, if you like here, I don't like how this turned out. This had too much purple. I, I brought that down too much. 
I'll want to make it more yellow and into a little bit of orange and then the red. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit so that it pretty much dries fully. And then I'm going to go back and then put in that yellow again and then rebuild that back up um, to not have that same effect there. Okay. So that's the great thing about using acrylics because it lets you hide mistakes <laughs> easier than some other materials. Okay, so there we go. Every sky is different. Okay, so that's still pretty wet. I don't know if I want to. Ah, I really want to touch it now, but I feel like I shouldn't do that yet. Okay. I'm going to not touch it. And now I'm going to do the water. So the water is pretty much the same colors that we use in the top here. What we're going to do is we're going to start off. Um, it's kind of like a very light purpley um, reddish pinky kind of color in this area. So, and then it has the darker one here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to start at the bottom and then come up and bring it lighter. So I'm just going to yeah, have enough color, which we're good with. So again, I'm just going to bring in some more of my red. We used quite a bit, like I said, of red. Um, and it looks like I used most of my blue too. I'm just going to make my dark my purple color here. Okay, and then we're just going to bring it across. And, and again, I'm going to use my water. And then I'm just going to go over what I just locked on with water. If you put too much water, it thins it out too much, and then it doesn't look as dark. So make sure that you still have enough paint on here. And this is pretty light. So again, I'm going to grab my black and I'm going to bring up my black from the bottom to the top. Yeah, you can see my bottom of my canvas. Okay, good. Okay. And with the water, whenever we do water, I like to do it just kind of as you're seeing my hand sweep back and forth like this. That's how I do the water because they're always kind of glistening. It looks like little streaks in the water. And then I, I'll add more little elements as we continue on. And always in little streaks. So it kind of gives the ripples. So we'll keep building this up. I'm actually almost out of red and blue. So I'm just going to add more. I severely underestimated how much <laughs> red and blue I would need. Maybe you did too, and that's okay. All right, so I'm just going to keep mixing these colors. Add it. And if it changes up a little bit, that's okay. More red in it. Grab some white. So as I'm bringing it up, I'm just trying to make sure that it's going a little bit lighter. So I put red, I'm getting more white. Now I'm using just white. Oh, <laughs> I totally painted over my last painting. Oh, that made me a little sad. That's okay. That's the corner. It was black. I can just repaint that over. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, okay. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, I'm like at times, so that really bothered me having the splash of paint. Okay, so I'm just as I'm coming closer here, I'm using white on my brush that is very dense in purple. And I'm going to try to make this a smooth line. This brush is not really my friend when it comes to making a nice smooth line. So I might have to go back over that horizon line with a brush that's a bit thinner that I have a bit more control of. Another tip too is if you bring your brush along the side, you'll get a better straight line. This is a bit darker than what I want it to be. Oh, and it's not where I want it to be. So I'm just going to bring this across to get my horizon line in place. I know it's a bit, again, it's darker than I want it to be, but we'll work with that and then we'll just lighten it as we go. Once you have like a nice straight line, it makes it a little easier to play with. Okay. Okay, 
Now mine has a lot of, um, it's very light. So I'm just gonna try to add a little bit darker to it. A bit of blue. Just to have some little spots, put some red. And now my paint's still quite wet and the white is quite prominent. So it's coming through quite significantly. Check, make sure. Perfect. Okay. I'm just trying to bring a little bit of that lightness down here too. Actually, having that window close is throwing me off a little bit. <laughs> like the color, I feel like it looks way lighter than I want it to look. And I can't really tell if it is or if it's just the shadow in the room now. Okay, so I'm just going to try to put a little bit of darkness in here. So I want it to be a little darker, but I don't want the black to overtake it. So what I did there was I just grabbed a little bit of black on my brush and I'm just sweeping it upwards and across and I'm just putting some more purple in. Okay. And when you're doing this, just make sure your brush it's good if it goes in the middle of the canvas, but just make sure you're you're bringing those strokes off your canvas. So the water, it gives the impression that your lines don't just randomly like end and like just before the end of it, you want it to like continue. So the water is, is continuing to flow, right? Um, I think I'm pretty happy with it. It looks a little bit different than my other one, but it's a different day. The water looks different. That's what's happening. Okay, cool. So I'm going to, yeah, okay, I'm gonna fix up my mistake that I put there. So I'm just gonna clear off that brush because I wanna add a little bit more yellow there and it's kind of like a weird gray color and I don't like it. But now that it has dried, I'm gonna go back and fix it. And I will show you what, how that works. And it's very easy, thank goodness. So the important thing is you have to make sure if you're using the same brush to now go back and do this lighter color um, this is where your murky water is going to not be your friend. So you may want to go switch up your water and get it cleaner. Make sure your brush, and I, my, my hands usually have quite a bit of paint on them. I just check it to make sure, and it's clear. So like now we're, we're good. So now if I put this white and yellow, we're not going to end up with a surprise burst of blue or red or purple or black. That's going to make me angry. <laughs> so... Um, I just put some more white on my palette. I'm just going to go back with the white and the yellow, and I'm just going to cover up what I don't like. Okay, I still want it to have this richness of color. I still want it to be yellow. I'm just going to put that back in. And get a touch of red. A touch more of red. Okay. I still want this to be a pretty dark yellow here because um, I want the sun to stand out nicely. A bit too much red on that brush. I just want to wipe that off a bit. Still there. Okay. okay, I just put some pure white on my brush and I'm just bringing it across. I'm just touching this up similar to what we did before. I'm just layering in some more colors just so it looks nice. And as you can see, this is all dry, so it's not blending anymore, right? So that's kind of poopy. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of the purple and then like sweep that back in just so we can try to blend it in a little bit more with that other background. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of water.
Okay. Okay. There we go. It's mm, a little opaque. Okay, so I'm just putting in, trying to blend in some of the little things I made so that it looks good. And I'm much happier with that gap there. And I really like the streaks. With um, acrylic paint as well, acrylic paint's really cool because you can layer on top. So when you do your first layer, like for example, like what you just saw. So I went through and I did my sky and then I made a mistake and then I went back and then I put in another layer. And what happens is because you have the other layer below it, it actually adds more of a richness in the color when you build off the layers from once you have the first layer and you put more layers on top, it actually builds off and it actually becomes really rich and the colors, I feel like they end up looking a bit more vibrant. Oh yeah, let that, let that come over mistake. Um, so, uh, I, I like doing that and you might even want to do that regardless. Um, you kind of paint it and then go back over once it's dry and then put another layer of it and it will just build some more character to it. It just looks deeper, I find. Okay, great. So normally at this point, um, we would go in and start blocking out where we want our lighthouse but because my background's still wet. I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start, um, we're going to start blocking out where we want the rocks to go. And then maybe we might go in and do um, the grassy area at the front and then go back in and do the lighthouse. Okay. So I'm just going to switch my brush. I'm going to go to one of my thinner ones. I didn't use the, my medium sized brush too much with this painting. I ended up sticking more with my um, fine point and also my um, big fat old brush. Okay, cool. Hope you guys are all doing well with your painting and enjoying it so far. Okay, so what I did, like I always do, is I start off by dipping my paintbrush into the water just to get it a little bit wet. And then now I'm just getting black on here and I want it to be really easy for it to go on the canvas and put a little bit of water just to make it a little easier to spread, but it's still mostly paint and my brush has a lot of paint on it. So what I do is I kind of like roll it so that there's paint, but it's not so much that's just going to like glop on. Um, okay, so now with this, so this, again, you can make it however you want. You wanna make it more hilly, um, we're just going to block in like where we want it. And then when you add the white highlights later, then you can then put in more layers of rocks if you want. Right. Um, okay, cool. So let's do that. So I'm going to have it jut out till about here. So that's where it's going to jut out to. Okay. I was gonna bring this across. Okay. And you can decide how you want it to go. It actually, it comes down because it kind of gives the illusion that it has a bit of a reflection in the water as it is over here. Um, and then um, the actual mountains are up here. Could actually, um, showing that a little bit better and maybe we'll do that in the water this time we'll see okay so I'm going to bring this out like this and that's a rocky shoreline so it's not going to be super straight and the same thing with the rocky mountains here rocky mountains okay so I'm going to bring this up and then we're going to bring it up here Okay. Okay, and this whole area, we're gonna paint it black. Paint it black. Okay. And I have a pretty smooth line because again, my paint, there's quite a bit of paint on my brush, um, but it's also um, a little bit watered down. 
we have that going for us, which is good. All right. This is a little bit gray because below it, I think it picked up some of the, the white that I had going on. Okay, so here I'm just gonna give it a little bit more feeling, and then we're gonna put in some of that grassiness there too. Okay, so my lighthouse is gonna live right there. Okay, so I think, yeah, so I'm, I'm dry enough right now. So I'm going to start blocking in where I want my lighthouse to be. So the lighthouse goes till about, I guess, if you break your canvas down um, to quarters. So it goes to about the first quarter here. So that's where I'm gonna put my lighthouse. And I'm just going to start off by doing the base of it. So when I say the base, I just mean this bottom full on black part there. Okay, so let's do that. It's a little smaller on top and then that's going to come out. Okay, and that line should be pretty straight. It's not a bit of an angle, obviously, but I mean, the line itself is straight because it's not organic. It's so I think so I'm going to start thinner and I'm going to come out. Okay, I'm just going to block all this in. What I would suggest too, when you're doing anything in a silhouette, um, start off, I think, smaller than what you might think, because then it will give you space that if you end up messing up the line, you can always like widen it or make it a little bigger and it's not going to look super weird. But if you start off and it's already pretty big, um, it's going to not work so well. It's going to be harder to cover up. So if you are doing a silhouette and you start off a bit smaller than what you would want. Like it's a little skinnier. You can always make it a little fatter and jut it out as you go. And it'll be a lot easier for you to control. Okay, so I'm just gonna make it across here. There we go. So there is the bottom of my lighthouse. Okay, and my line, I'd like it to be a little straighter so I'm just going to do that but, okay okay I feel like it looks a little crooked I'm just going to bring out this a little bit That's kind of what I'm saying. Like if I had already built a big old really fat base to it, it'd be really hard for me to touch it up or fix it up. It would just end up having to be huge. <laughs> and I might on this just actually bring this out a little bit, make give it a bit more land to sit on. There you go. I'll just bring that out a little bit more. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hey, Susan. Awesome. So now let's continue doing our lighthouse. Okay, so the lighthouse in this picture, it has two rims before we get to where the light is. So there's like a little rim and then there's another rim that juts out a little bit further and they're both a little rounded in the picture. Again, you can make them rounded, you can decide it didn't work for you and make them straight. That works out too. So I'm just going to go out a little bit and make it the width of my paintbrush essentially. And I'm just making sure I have good paint on here. And then I'm just touching it like that with my paintbrush. Like that. Okay. That's my first and then we're going to then go out a little bit further for the second bay, a layer. There we go. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is, yay! I'm so glad that you stopped in to say hi, Susan. All right, cool. So now we're gonna do the top part. And the top part is like 
half oval, I suppose, <laughs> because it's the best way to describe it. And it's about as wide as that last space. It could be a little bit more. And the gap in between, you want to leave like a good, a good gap because again, if your line gets kind of weird, you want to be able to go back and adjust it if necessary. Okay. So we're going to now bring in the top part. Okay, and just curve it a bit with your brush. Okay, there we go. Yeah, kind of looks like a hamburger in the sky. <laughs> All right, and then now I'm gonna just put in the little top part there, like a little nubby all right there we go so that's just that Ta -da! okay now um yeah so now we're going to put in the lines as well okay so the lines the first line actually it doesn't actually go right at the edge it goes just inside the edge um so it doesn't go from there to there it just goes just inside of it. Okay. And then I'm going to put a few lines in. Oh, I feel like I don't have, I feel like it's not smooth enough, my paint. So I'm just going to put a bit more water, make sure my brush is cooperating. Yeah, I feel like it's not. There we go. There we go. Ta da! Okay. There is this lighthouse. Beautiful. Okay. So we got that going. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in some of the little grassy elements. I think, unless I want to use this brush, isn't my thinnest brush. And I feel like I use something thinner to get that little details going. Okay. I'm going to try to use this brush. If not, I might use something a little thinner because I want the, the lines to be a little. Yeah, these are creating it a bit too thick. Oh yeah, this brush is kind of weird. This brush has almost like a double point sometimes, which is kind of nice right now to do foliage that way, but really annoying when you're trying to get a straight line. Oh yeah, that works kind of for what I need right now. I'm just putting in a little bit of grass kind of, making some a little taller than others just to add some dimensionality to it. And then there's some grass up here. That does not look like grass. That looks like a big, I don't know what. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna add in some little lines there to give that impression of foliage. Probably going to get a thinner brush and make some more detailed lines because that's a little too rough for me. But I still want to use this brush just to get the, the bottom in here too. So I'm going to put in at the bottom as well some of these lines. So it's a little bit higher on the side and it kind of comes down to kind of create a nice little frame almost for the painting. Okay. okay, so let's just pop that in. Some will be a little thicker. I'm actually gonna, you know what, I'm gonna just block in a, the corner of it being pretty darn black. Get the shadow, because that's kind of how it looks. I'm gonna do that on both sides. I'm just putting some black just to give the, the ground 
the shadow of the ground and then I'll build up some grass afterwards. And I'm gonna switch over to a brush that I prefer because this brush is a little too thick for my liking. Okay, so let me see which one am I gonna use. Let's try that. Okay, this is my really thin one. This is the one I usually use for all my thin stuff. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna put some black on there. I'm gonna make it a little thinner with the black paint. And then just put in the grass however you want it. Some of the grass is coming from the side of the canvas. Because again, this land does continue outside of the border of your canvas. That will make it look more real. Okay, and make sure when you were doing these little wisps of grass, they're going in a few different directions. Some of them kind of can sweep in a weird curve if they want. And there's some smaller grass that just kind of lives like that. Okay. There might be a really tall one for some reason that's just growing there. Looks like it's a friend. Okay. There we go. So I like that on that side. And now we're going to continue on the side. Hope everyone's doing well so far. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And so I'm just putting in grass and I'm just putting some smaller ones kind of in front of them just to, so it doesn't just look like three random hairs of grass sticking up. Like it actually looks like there's a bunch of, I don't know if it's grass, but whatever it is near water. <laughs> and some of these are also kind of coming off the side of the page. So just do them until you are happy with the way it looks. And you can always come back and touch that up. So don't worry if we end up continuing on or if you feel like you wanna stay on here a little bit longer. That's the great thing about these videos is that you can always um, watch them at a later date too. And I, I think you can always like go back as well. I don't know if you can do that when it's live, but um, once it's done, you can definitely go back and check it out. So I'm just gonna touch up some of these too. Cause some of them are not very, they're a little bit too sparse. I can see the canvas. I want it to be a little thicker than some of these lines. Yeah, I like that more. Let's give it a little bit more detail. Okay, I think I like that more. Okay, got a few more. Make them go a few different directions. Some a little bit higher than others. Okay. All right, 
I think we're good. Awesome. So that is pretty much, oh yeah. And then we want to get the birds, which we'll do the birds right yet because I want to put in the sun first before we do that. But we can start putting in the um, reflect um, the shadow of the uh, lighthouse in the water. So let's think about our light source is going to be here and we're going to have it hit on to the thing. So technically the way I did the light source here, it's a little bit straight on. So it should actually be a little bit more on an angle because the sun's hitting, right? Um, so this should be slightly on a more of an angle. So that's what I'm going to try to create on, on this one. Um, so I feel like that's a little bit more accurate to where the light source is. Um, but you can do whatever you like, really. But that's what I'm going to do here. Okay. And then we we're going to do that again. You just get the black. Just make sure it's nice and easy to spread, but not dripping wet, because then that will not be your friend. And then we're going to just kind of go back and forth on the water as if this is like waves, but it's still going to be pretty thick because it is creating like a dark shadow. I really need my hand to be like down, flat down. So I'm going to bring it out this way and it's going to come out a little bit because the top part Okay. And then the middle part is going to be mostly black, though. So I just want to do that, make sure. Middle is mostly black. Like that. Yeah, I kind of like that a little more. Not as big as that one, though. I'm make that a little wider. That's what I'm going to want to do. So again, like I mentioned before, I started off a little smaller and now I'm building it a little wider. So I know where I want to go with it. And so now I can expand it a bit instead of being stuck and being it too wide and then you're kind of stuck with what you have. So that is that. They're going to be a little bit of some of this that's showing here. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do also to create a little bit of shadow from these rocks is I'm just adding a little bit in the water here, which I feel like I should have added there too. I'm just, again, going back and forth with that, with the white, with the white, with the black. Wrong color. Okay. Oh, it looks like it's a bit more of a reflection. Nice. Okay. Reflection of those two. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Okay. Hey, John. Awesome. So, some spots here that were a little, I could see through a bit. So, I'm just touching that up a little bit. Okay, cool. So I think we're good with black for now. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to clear off my brush there. And there's a few more elements left with this design. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pop in where we want our bright setting sun to go in. So with my really thin brush, again, I'm going to dip that in water, get pure white, and we're gonna decide where we want that sun to be again. Um, hopefully you already kind of did that before you put your shadow in. If you put your sun over here, it's not really gonna make logical sense, but maybe it's a surreal, surrealistic painting, so it would be totally fine. Okay, so now we're gonna just um, block in where we want that sun to go. So with pure white, mm, Sorry, it's not spreading as easy as I want. I need a little bit more water. Okay, so let's put that right here. Okay. 
Mm. And a little bit of the black things there. That's okay. We can let it dry fully. It's still showing up. And then we can just paint over it with white if we need to. Just trying to be cautious of that. Okay. That is where that sun is going to live. Okay. And I've kind of done a half circle and I haven't gone all the way down to the line. Um, what I'm going to do now is the sun kind of looks like it's mirrored in a, or masked in a bit of cloud. So I'm going to take the white on my brush and I'm just going to, sorry, again, dip it in some water to make sure it's smooth and flowing. And then I'm just going to bring it out a bit and also put like a line here. Okay, and then just some additional lines around. Maybe it affects the sun, maybe it doesn't. There we go. Then I'm just going to go back and just put some more white in the sun to make sure it's so prominent. Okay, so and then I'm just going to add a little bit of detail while I have my white a bit to the sky. I'm just putting a few little streaks. in the background. And again, acrylic paint, awesome, because now that it's fully dry, the white will stick on nicely. So it kind of just gives a little bit of detail like that. I'm just going to bring that up from this side too. So it just adds a little bit of like detail in the sky there. Okay. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the water. Okay, or I'm going to do the same thing and it's going to be a bit more that sun is definitely reflecting in the water here. Right, and it's water, so we want to make sure that the water has some life to it. So just bring your brush. You see, I'm just kind of going back and forth a bit. It's a bit more concentrated, and as I'm getting a bit further away, I'm not putting as many. And I'm bringing it more in the center because that's where the sun is reflecting there. But then we still want the sun to have an impact, it's still going to reflect in the water, even a while away, right? So as you can see what I'm doing, I'm just like lightly touching the canvas. I'm trying to get a couple of different lines with the white. I'm trying to make sure they're not all the same stroke length, which is a bit of a challenge for me. I'm even going to bring a few in here, just a little bit there too. Just touched a little bit. Okay. And then one off the page. Don't forget to put some off the page. Okay, cool. So that kind of gave it a little bit more. The sun's kind of hitting different areas of it, which is really nice. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with yellow and do the same kind of like touchy touch touch with the yellow. So I'm just got some yellow on my brush in the same way. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. Okay, so it's not all, oof, not enough water. Pretty much my biggest thing I see, I think all the time It's like, uh. And I'm going mostly over the white lines I just put it. So I'm trying, I'm not necessarily adding a bunch more yellow. I'm just coloring almost the white lines a little bit with the yellow, just giving a little bit of glow to them. Okay. Okay. 
and we're going to do the same thing with um we're going to go and also do some purples back in here too just putting some more colors in there and give it more of that water look because water has lots of ripples in it okay a little bit of that okay so now i'm going to go back and mix a bit of purple with my thin brush so i need my red and i need my blue my thin brush okay okay and get some more water Awesome. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do the same thing again and then just put in some little streaks in the water. So boom, boom. Trying to vary where I put them. I'm even going a little closer because again, when there is um, a darker color, it does make the lighter color stand out and vice versa, right? So you do want a little bit of dark in the light Bob Ross says that, and apparently my son also quotes that now. It's kind of funny. Um, okay, just needed to wet that a little bit. Okay, cool. I'm just putting in, water is like one of my most favorite things to paint. Let's just try to keep the brush very thin to get really nice little ripples in the water. If it gets a little thicker too, it's okay. If it gets too thick again, you can always go back and put a little bit of like a different color on it to take away from that fact. I'm gonna bring in a little bit in here too. Okay. Kind of bringing it out a little bit, and then I'm just going to. Um, I want a little bit more darkness actually, so I want to bring a little bit of black into that too. So I'm just putting a little bit of black into the purple I made, and I want a few dark strokes in my water because it's a little too light for me right now. So I just put black into that purple color. I'm gonna do the same thing. So this is a little too thick. And I'm putting more of this dark color in the dark areas and fewer of the dark colors in the light area. So like it should be, right? So like all down here, it's very dark. So I'm kind of almost like the, with the strokes that I just made with the white, I'm kind of almost like I'm going over them or bringing a lot of dark little lines around them because this is the area where it should be a little darker, right? But we still like the white so that it still pops and it still shows off the darkness. And it gives like movement to the water, brings it to life a bit. At least I find it does. This is honestly painting water and putting all these little streaks in is something I could do. This could take me like all afternoon <laughs> just to like add in some more lines. I'm trying to do this quickly so we can go to the next part. So I can do that. But um, the more, again, with acrylic too, the more you build, the more you put more lines on top, on top, on top, it will keep looking deeper and deeper and it will give it more. Um, it look just more realistic. I'm just gonna again dull some of these lighter lines. And again, building it up. So you still have the lightness underneath, but then now it you kind of tone it down a little bit and it just looks, I think it looks really cool. I really like that. Okay. So like I said, you can go and do this for a long time. 
I'm trying to make sure that my strokes don't all end in the same place again. And it's hard to do that, especially when you have your head kind of like down and you're focused on like little bits. It's easy to uh, get into a groove and then look up and be like, oh no, <laughs> they're too close together. I kind of went a little bit crazy, just a bit. Just trying to match it a little bit on the top here. Not wide enough. Okay. I don't want to put up any other one there too. Okay, I definitely uh, did way more on this painting than I did on my last one. I just put a bit of yellow on my brush just so I can dull it out a little bit. Okay, cool. So I think I'm going to stop because <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to keep going. Um, I might still touch it up a little bit. It's a little dark in there, but um, you know what I actually, I didn't do. I actually did put a little bit of like a lighter purple color too. I'm just going to do that quickly ish before I move on to the next part. Okay, that's, yeah, that's better. I'll put a little bit of this lighter purple in here. leaving that for now. All right, and then let's go back and let's put in some of our um, white highlights. So we wanna just highlight, so again, where the sun's hitting, we're gonna put a white highlight on this side of the um, lighthouse. We're also gonna put a white highlight on the top here too, and also the two lines there. And then we're also gonna put the rays of the lighthouse too coming out. And then we're gonna touch a little bit of white highlights as well into the, um, like the grass that's growing around it and then also build out our rocks. So let's get white paint. And again, we want it to be on our thinnest brush and try to get a nice smooth thin line on your brush. Um, the way I get my brush really thin or try to make it as thin is I just flatten it down as I'm going. And then my brush ends up being very thin so I can kind of hopefully control it and make more precise lines on it. Okay, so with this 
this I kind of made it a, like a broken line so that it it doesn't go all the way to the end. It just goes almost to the end. I'm gonna do the same type of thing here all the way down. And then at the bottom where the base of it is, I'm just gonna do that just to give it a bit of dimension. Okay, do that as well to there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do the, the top part like this and top part there. I'm also gonna touch sides, give it a little bit of a curve. Okay, we're also going to the top part here. And here. That. Okay. And it's also touching this rim there. And maybe even a little bit on that one too. Maybe a little bit on that one, but that's it. Maybe this one's really long. Cool. And then let's put in the little touches of light on the grass. It doesn't have to be perfect, just to give it an impression that um, the light's hitting it slightly. It's not gonna be all of them, just gonna be a few. There we go, okay. And then now let's build out the rocks as well with the white paint. Okay, so my rock, this one's gonna be like, gonna come like that, that. And I'm gonna have another one that's like here, but it also kind of came up this way. Those are my rocks. There we go. That's how my rocks look this time. A little bit of highlight there too. Okay, and then let's put in the rays from the lighthouse. And again, it's the same way we just did those. We're just gonna put in I just make some of them like the one in the middle, but a little bit longer and then make them come in a little bit shorter and put little ones coming in this way. And then also is on this side too. Okay, and then the way I did this one is I put a little bit of, I made it a little bit like yellowy there to make it look like the light was coming from there. Cause right now it just looks like you can see through it. And it, to me, it didn't make sense cause you couldn't see where the light source was coming from. So I'm just gonna do the same thing with this one. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of yellow on my thin brush that was already had the white on it. And I'm just going to touch it. And it's okay if the purple still shows. It's just to give you, give the impression that there is a light source and maybe that there are some panels in here, um, like windows. There we go. Okay, so it has, it's just a little brighter in there. Okay, cool. And then we're just gonna put our birds in the sky. Okay, so same brush, get black, make it thin. Okay, I'm gonna put some birds. This, one, this time I'm gonna have this one flying here. So 
one's going to be flying here. Another one here. And another one here. Another one here. Yeah, okay, that's where they are. <laughs> awesome. All right, so I think that wraps it up. Like I said, I might end up playing around a little bit more with the water. So I like it, but I also think it's a little too rough. So I might either build in some more lines to kind of give it more depth and more texture, or I might um, soften it up a bit. I'm not exactly sure yet, but overall, um, yeah, I'm overall I'm happy with the way it turned out. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed um, this painting. So here is the final product. And I guess you can see it pretty good from where you're at. Yeah, and I do, I really do like how that, I changed that up on this one versus this one, because this one does look a little bit odd now that it's straight on and then the sun's there. I mean, it doesn't look horrible, but although I still like some of the elements and how I blended this one a little bit more. It's, it's very weird when you do like two of the same paintings very close together. <laughs> but there you go. So there we go. So there is our uh, sunset. What do we call it? Lighthouse sunset. Um, and thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, we'll continue to do the paint parties on Saturdays at two. And what I'll be doing is every week, as I've been doing for the last couple of weeks, is on um, Tuesday, I'll post on the um, at Lisa's Painting Parties um, page, I'll post three different choices that you guys can vote on. And then the winner by Friday at noon, that will be the one that we'll paint on Saturday. Um, so please uh, let me know um, if, uh, if you have any questions or if uh, that's working for you so far. I think so far, since we're all pretty much in self-isolation, <laughs> I guess the timing works okay. And then again, if it doesn't work, you can always watch the videos live at any other time. Please share this as well with um, anyone else you think might be interested. And um, that would be fantastic. Um, and uh, thank you guys so much. And of course, please don't forget to um, take a picture of your painting and put it in the comments there. Um, my plan is I'm gonna be grabbing those pictures and putting them into um, folders so we can kind of access them a little bit easier in the photos on the page so we can see everyone's paintings for the paintings that we've done. Um, so I'll be doing that um, in the next week or so. Um, and I think that's about it. All right, guys, have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And um, I look forward to doing this again sometime. All right. And now,